Hi everyone and thanks for being with me. I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, what's happening in Gaza and particularly what's happening in relation to Penny Wong going over to Israel to have a conversation with Israel politicians, but not just them. She's also having a conversation with people in the West Bank, the Palestinians themselves, and some of those people who were victims of the massacre on October the 7th. Now, the criticism that has come from Sky News has been, let's just say, unfair. And there's a Sherry Markson piece where Sherry talks about what it was like for uh, just the Israelis themselves. And not once during this uh, segment that I'm about to play for you, does she mention what it is like for the Palestinians? Now, we have to remember at this point, I know two or 3,000 perhaps um, Israelis have been killed. A lot of them are the soldiers, but there has also been 23,000 Palestinians killed. And for some reason, we seem to ignore, or the right seems to want to ignore, the number of deaths that have occurred uh, on the Palestinian side. And I find that for any of us who have a sense of humanity, it is beyond belief that for whatever reason, we ignore what's happening to the Palestinian people. Now, this is not about necessarily, and it's, no, I won't say necessarily, it's certainly not about saying that you're, because you have some empathy to these 23,000 people that have been killed, their loved ones, the families that have lost these people, and particularly the families, I think, that have lost children in this war as well. So, and it's not about being anti-Jew. It's not. This is about stipulating exactly what happens, has happened, what we know from media reports, not exaggerating it, but simply understanding that there is a proportionality here which we need to identify and that we could, and I think we should, call it a genocide given the number of people not only that have died, but the way by which Israel has gone about destroying Gaza by demolishing homes, factories, businesses, and ensuring that this particular population, to some extent even now, are being starved to death. So why is it then that the media would choose to ignore all of this? Well, because they see everything as being the fault of Hamas. And I'm not going to dispute the fact at all, and when I'm not going to talk about this. There certainly is, we need to identify that what Hamas did on October the 7th is horrific. Done, dealt with, understand that if this is the Israeli response that we really need to focus on now, given the number of people that have died. And why it is that we ignore those deaths is beyond me. Why it is that we seem to want to, or people, not we, us, not me, but why is it that people specifically want to see this as being a, uh, a Hamas invoked event that has brought about a response from Israel that has then meant that they've decided to desecrate uh, Gaza, to destroy it completely. What is this really all about? And at the end of the day, this is about getting rid of Palestinians, particularly from Gaza. And Penny Wong's uh, attitude to this, I think, has been quite reasonable in that she has decided to go to the West Bank and she's also decided to have conversations with obviously the Israeli government as well and those people that survived October the 7th and what that means to them. I see this as quite a uh, generous view and appropriate, but not Sky News, because to them, she should have gone and had a look at what was happening specifically uh, in on the, the, um, the, the area in which was the area in which many people were killed on October the 7th. I can't see any valid reason for that. If she's going to speak to the survivors, then that's that's good enough. 
Um, and it's almost like Sky expect, or Sherry does in this case, expect the to her to be able to see the massacres, to see the dead children, to see the dead um, women, to to experience the horrible things that Hamas did. Well, of course she can't experience that, but she can have a conversation to those people who were impacted by it, which is simply what she is doing. Quite reasonable, it seems to me, but certainly doesn't seem reasonable to Sherry for some particular reason. And oh, as Hamas we go through this, I'll talk about During it. her trip to Israel. We'd like to feel proud of our country on the international stage, but as we sit here tonight, we can only be ashamed of our foreign minister. We all called on Albanese to visit Israel in the wake of the terror attacks on October 7, and Penny Wong should have flown to Israel, like most other Western world leaders and foreign ministers, right after the attacks in a show of solidarity. But she didn't do that. God forbid this government should actually show some support for Israel in its darkest hour. Instead, she's only now travelling to Israel more than now, one three of, one of the months. Issues, uh, one of the issues that I have here particularly is, um, <clears throat> so why is it that we need to show uh, support for Israel, given that <clears throat> in terms of proportionality, they <clears throat> are also the aggressor? So we have one side that was the aggressor on October the 7th, <clears throat> and we now have a 100-day war in which uh, the aggressor is now Israel. And so why is it that Ka Sherry must focus on this notion that no one is, seems to be supporting Israel? Well, they're not supporting Israel simply because of the number of people that have died on, in Gaza. And I think that that is quite a reasonable response, you know? So why... Is, and it's almost like she's feigning concern, feigning concern for Israel, when in actual fact it's Israel that has been the aggressor. October 7. And there can be no mistaking this trip as one of support because Wong refuses to even visit the sites of the Hamas massacre. She won't step foot in the kibbutzes where frightened families were slaughtered in cold blood, where young women were raped and babies were killed or kidnapped. Penny Wong couldn't articulate a reason today when she was asked why she wasn't visiting. She didn't even bother to try. Minister, why are you going to the uh, site of the October 7 massacre when you're over there? Uh, I will be meeting uh, with survivors of that attack, uh, as well as families of hostages, uh, and uh, you know, that, that will be important. To me, that, that is a more than Wong's reasonable. That is a more than reasonable response. Uh, she is, uh, is visiting those people that were impacted by what happened on October the seventh. I don't think we could ask more of her than just that. But clearly, from Sherry's perspective, uh, she just doesn't think that that is, for some reason, good enough. Only mention of hostages in her press conference before she left for the Middle East today. Not once did she explicitly call for Hamas to return hostages. Not once did she call for Hamas to stop its missiles, its rockets, its war on Israel, its use of civilians as human shields. Instead, I want to know, I want to know how Sherry knows what, what uh, has she somehow got into Penny Wong's mind and how she knows what Penny is thinking and what conversations she's going to be having with the Israeli government. And whether or not she does believe... So it's almost like saying, well, does Penny Wong believe that the hostages should be returned? Of course she does. Only a moron would think otherwise. But you know, the fact that she hasn't articulated that that is going to be part of her conversation and that for some reason it appears that Penny Wong does not believe that the hostages should be returned. It's, it's a stupid, uh, moronic uh, attitude to take, I believe, and is disingenuous and certainly isn't reflecting exactly what I believe uh, someone like Penny Wong would be thinking. And Penny Wong's only criticism today was for Israel.
Settler violence uh, in the occupied Palestinian territories uh, must be condemned, uh, and we do so. Uh, well, our position is that we want to see a sustainable ceasefire and that we see an international humanitarian, uh, immediate humanitarian ceasefire as a step towards that. I think there is increasing concern about uh, the protection of civilian lives, uh, and we will continue to express uh, those views uh, to all parties. And when speaking about the purpose of her trip, Penny Wong didn't once say it was to express solidarity with Israel because it's obviously not. But instead, she said she's going to demand that international law be upheld. And I, I think focusing... on, that, on that particular point, it is, it is true that the Australian government, thank God, have chosen not to take an, a, a position which is about supporting Israel wholeheartedly, regardless of what they do. Penny Wong's on a fact-finding mission. She wants to find out exactly what has happened, how people are responding to it, and to particularly to advocate for the Palestinian people. The problem is that people like Sherry Markson don't care about the women and children and others that are dying in, in, on Gaza. She doesn't give a rat's ass <coughs> about any of those people. And I find, I find that horrific, that for some reason, it doesn't matter where this dispute is, it doesn't matter which part of the world we're having a... Um, where people are using such weapons as the types that Israel's using, that, that thousands of people are dying unnecessarily, and that people like Sherry Markson and those commentators on Sky News don't seem to care one iota about what is happening to these people. I find it absolutely, absolutely appalling. I'd like to know what you think, and please subscribe to my channel and to uh, place a comment down below. I'm having trouble getting back to comments because I've been otherwise busy, and I hope to be able to get back to them later on today. So let me know what you think in the comments below, and just remember to take care of yourselves, look after your family, and ensure that you and the people that you love are safe.